Not too long ago, there's a man named Art Lieber who spent $50,000 of his own money, and uh, he, he put up his billboards and his TV commercials, and not surprisingly, he lost in his election in Missouri. He's on our newsmaker line today to talk a little bit about his experience of running, and he has written a book called The Unlikely Candidate. And uh, Art, welcome to Youngstown, and pick it up from there, sir. And thanks very much for having me. Nice to have you along. What your experience? Would you would you do it again? Uh, if the circumstances repeated themselves, I hope they don't. I filed uh, with three hours to go before the deadline, and uh, I had been writing beforehand, uh, trying to encourage someone who might have more na- name recognition than me to run against the incumbent. Uh, that didn't happen. Uh, I, I'm committed enough to democracy that if there's not a Democrat in the uh, in the race, then I would do it again. But you pick up the uh, you put your put your own money up there. People weren't covering you. What was your experience like? You talk about Planned Parenthood for one example. Well, uh, with Planned Parenthood, I, I certainly am very supportive of their mission and, and their practices. Um, they have a political wing, and one of the things that I learned, I mean, I went into this rather naively. I hadn't been in uh, politics before. But um, it's like, you know, the Indians are doing really well. They're probably a good bet if you're a betting person now. Uh, we hope, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope it hangs on. But uh, in any event, Planned Parenthood and a number of other organizations, they tend to want to bet on candidates who are going to win. Uh, so they have a good batting average. Um, and it's not so much whether or not somebody uh, agrees with uh, their philosophy or, or their practices. Um, so uh, when I had to fill out a questionnaire survey, they asked me whether or not uh, – I would support the codification of Roe v. Wade, and I said, uh, "Be careful for what you wish." And I said, "Because because Roe v. Wade goes back to 1973. It may be if you're in favor of choice, you want something more than uh, Roe v. Wade provides. So maybe uh, new law sh- laws uh, should be different." So they didn't like that. You they, didn't get... uh, they, 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 because I didn't answer it yes or no. Uh, they said uh, that's not an acceptable answer. Yeah. Which reminded me of being back in school. Yeah, so so there's one of the things that you started off with. What about um, funding your own campaign here? I mean, are you are you taken seriously? And what what do you think that the camp how the campaign law should be changed to fund campaigns? Well, I as to whether or not I was taken seriously, I think I was by uh, a fair number of people. Um, I think, quite frankly, in the media. Uh, it created kind of a double jeopardy because by not taking outside funding, I'm already putting myself at a disadvantage. Then when the media and others are saying, well, he's not really a serious candidate, um, that's kind of like piling on. I'm willing to take the risk of running without uh, the financing of my opponent or, or what a lot of other Democrats would have. So um, I, one of the things that I've talked about is, is generational change, and I hope in the future candidates who, who might not take money are taken seriously. Uh, as for uh, changing the laws, we've tried that with McCain-Feingold. I think there are two basic problems. One is uh, legislatures aren't inclined to do so, and two, um, the courts, uh, quite properly so, I think want to protect the First Amendment. They define contributions as a form of free speech. What I'd like to see is... Uh, going to a system somewhat uh, similar to what the ancient Greeks had, a shame culture, where if somebody is spending a lot of money, a whole lot of money, that uh, there's almost a knee-jerk reaction on the part of voters to say, that's obnoxious, that's unacceptable, you lost my vote just because Mm -hmm. you're raising all this silly money, particularly to run negative ads. Right, right. The shame culture, I I don't know if we're beyond shame or not, because something that I always think about, we just had a... We just had an election here, and I'm thinking about some of the can- candidates that ran ads. They have to live with themselves afterwards, but much of it is forgotten. You can almost say anything going into a campaign, Art. That's true, and uh, the opponent who I ran against, Todd Aiken, who's uh, going to run for the Senate in Missouri now, uh, I think for good reason he didn't really wasn't concerned about losing to me, and so there weren't any negative ads. But there were a lot here in Missouri, as I'm sure there were in, in Ohio. After the campaign, I contacted the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center down in Montgomery, Alabama, about whether or not uh, if they were, were interested in looking into whether or not certain uh, uh, commercials were forms of hate crime. Mm-hmm. Uh, they initially were not interested in it. I want to pursue it further because some, one way or another, I think we need to put a bur- the brakes on um, these terribly deceitful and nasty ads.
Yeah. So what did you learn as an unlikely candidate? I know you've written a book, you've gone out and you've peddled it yourself, and uh, you know, you're trying to get get that going. Is it a primer on how people can run for candidates, or is it warning them against running? Oh, I, I, I hope that it's very much uh, uh, encouraging people to run. I mean, in part, I, I uh, describe my experiences, and then I talk about changes in uh, funding and a lot in education, uh, because I think when, when we live in a society where, uh, you know, 30, 40 percent of the population believes that Barack Obama was born in Kenya or that he's a Muslim or whatever, you can take all the standardized tests in the world and make uh, students look good, make schools look good, but if they're, you know, parroting this line uh, that, that he's uh, Kenyan, you know, something has failed. We've got to really redesign our schools in a way. I, I, I'd favor a two-year moratorium on standardized tests um, to try and improve critical thinking on the part of students. Mm-hmm. Very well. All right, and again, the book, uh, is it widely available now, Art? It is available on uh, uh, Amazon. You can get print edition. You can get uh, uh, Kindle, and I just yesterday made arrangements to have a robot read it. Okay, a robot read it. Huh? Exactly. An, un- an, un- an unlikely candidate. By the way, um, uh, how did you do for storms out there in your neck of the woods? You're uh, out there. Are you near Jefferson, or let's see, where are you? Joplin. We're we're uh, about 250 miles uh, northwest of there. So uh, we've had our problems, but uh, with this latest go round, um, we've been pretty lucky. And I heard beforehand it sounds like you're having quite a bit. So um, it's uh, it's very strange what's happening. Yeah, very well. Hey, best to you in the book, and uh, I'm glad you stuck your neck out there. And uh, sorry you lost 50 grand. <laughs> no, I think I won. I'm, I have the pleasure of talking to you. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, Dan. An unlikely candidate, and that is uh, someone out there you want to run, Arthur Lieber. An un-